who wants to let us into the chat or sorry the show I can do it I can do it nine times yes you're sitting next to me it better be loud all right. <clears throat> so we'll give us a countdown five four three two one are you it's ready it's louder than podcast it is march 16th 2018 the year of our lord and savior not ea um valve pause for laughter no good no good no anyway i am <laughs> chris joined by chris hello taylor hello and last and least eric you mean so it's opposite day right yes hello is eric wait if it's opposite no i'm not, I'm not gonna get started on that train <laughs> um we are going to jump right into topic number one which one do you guys want to start with i want to talk about games you would rather spectate than play oh yeah i like that one all right so i got one which is really big that I would love to be good at, but I'm not even going to attempt to play it because I know I would just be shameful at it. Okay. Uh, Starcraft. Oh. Yes. There's a long time where I like I would actually just go watch like professional players play Starcraft. Yeah, I, I um, my 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 boy Supernova Maniac. Hello. Yeah, boy. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he used to like cast and like translate and stuff. Oh, that's cool. And I, yeah, I watch him stream, um, and it's it's really interesting. But like, it's not. I mean, of course, you know, I watch like Day Nine and shit. Um, but like, it's the kind of game I I I would like be inclined to play through the campaign mode because you know it's. It, the, the 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 barrier of entry on campaign mode way lower. <laughs> I have no intention of getting good at StarCraft. Dude, I can just imagine like how many hours of gameplay you need to actually be like competent at the game. It's like I mean, on one hand, though, I will say, I, dude, it's one of the hardest games in the entire world to be good at. I'm not saying that it isn't, but like. After talking to people about the game more and seeing more about it, honestly, like, it's it's not as hard to understand as people think. It's literally just repetition, just, like, playing it and, like, playing it often. But, like, at the higher levels, there's just so much you have to pay attention to. You need to be, like, galaxy brain to actually know what's going on on, like, three bases at once. And that's micro that. <laughs> well, and, and that's the kind of cool thing about StarCraft is, uh, fr again, from what people more knowledgeable than myself have told me, um, if you're a top pro player in a match, you're going to fuck up constantly, and I think that's so cool. Yeah, like... Uh, like, even the pros are, like, constantly making huge mistakes that they could have avoided. And like uh, jokes about APM in those games exist for a reason. I mean, yeah. they're just as reflex oriented as something you'd expect, like a Street Fighter or even yeah. run of the Spectacle Fighter. Like, um, what was I gonna say? I like I'm a big turn based strategy guy because I like to think about my turns, like I choose yeah. like chess. But like I do, I love I I do like playing real time strategies. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm just not the best at it. <laughs> And I yeah, will it's, get wrecked. It's probably one of my least favorite genres of game, even though I technically do enjoy it. But like, I don't know, man. Like, I like playing games with or against people, and I would never want to play an RTS against somebody, depending on the RTS. Like, if it's a less complex one, yeah, that would be fun. Like, if I'm playing against uh, someone who's like my level, like beginner, no problem, because we'll both be idiots about it. But if like I'm playing against someone who's been playing for like a year, I'm like, nope, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to get whipped. <laughs> I hear you both. I think I dropped out of RTS around the time it was either Brood Wars or Warcraft Three, and even then I didn't do the online stuff. I just played single player campaigns. Yeah, I actually played a Lord of the Rings real time strategy back in the days of the Xbox One. Wait, uh, back in the days of the Xbox One. You mean the original? Xbox? Original? Yes, oh, original <laughs> Xbox. Sorry, I forgot they made the Xbox One. Wait, what? What was the name of that one? Because I think I know the one you're talking about. I'm not sure, but if you got the ring, you can make Sauron on your team. 
Oh, shit. But, um, I forgot what I was, oh, was going to say. Oh, yeah, I remember playing a game where the, uh, one guy was just so, like, much better than me and my friend. My, sorry, my friend and I. Um, we were sitting next to each other thinking about how we were going to win this game. So we decided just to make walls. Lots of walls. To the point where the guy just quit because it was so annoying to kill us. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Was He's that one like, called the 2016 presidential ticket? <laughs> yes, that's also the same strategy. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, like, I've always had fun with them, it's just, I'm not good. <laughs> yeah, real-time strategy is definitely my weakest genre, like, by a landslide. Yep, I know the feel. Um, I've, I've gotten really into, uh, puzzle games, and on that note, like, I mean, like, as an adult in general, uh, on that note, I really like Tetris Grandmaster, and I, I would love to play it more, but it's definitely the kind of game I would rather watch somebody who's really good at it. Have mm. you guys seen TGM? Yeah, it's like no, there actually, people championship level that play it with the blocks invisible. And... What? Yeah. Excuse okay, me, sir? So, Eric, Eric, TGM is, uh, you know, Arika, the, mm. the Japanese arcade uh, game uh, the, the, the dev? No, I don't. Okay, so they made, uh, trying to think if you know any games that they made do you remember when street fighter ex was a thing like the 3d street fighter for like ps1 um street fighter yes i think so yes they they were the ones who were partially making that and they were good games um but aside from fighting games and like other stuff like in japan they made uh tetris grandmaster where they made it, it's a it's an official like real version of tetris but it's very rank heavy so the game is all about just pure strategy, no, like, you know, weird gimmicks. I mean, yes, it gets faster and shit, but, like, other than that, it's just pure, hard, fucking coded Tetris nice. with, uh, with holds. holds it's and a commie plot to give the stuff. West aneurysms. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's actually a really cool mode. I, I know a few people who are very, very, very good at the game. And uh, at MAGFest, I saw a couple of my friends play a, uh, a co-op of it, where you're both on the same fucking, um, the same screen. Sharing really? Sharing pieces. Yeah. At MAGFest? Like, yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, but it's, it's one of those games where, like, even for somebody who loves Tetris, it's, like, such a, oh god, it's so skill-intensive that, like, <laughs> I'll play it. And it's actually the only version of Tetris that I really, like, get excited about anymore, just because I've been playing it for, like, literally over two decades now. But, like, um, I think it's the most unique form of Tetris, and it, it, I love it, but I have no desire to play it to the extent that I would rather watch people who are really, really good at it. Mm. A game I used to play a lot, and I loved watching, but not so much anymore, was uh, Dota. Yeah, I... Like, I was super into many, it. How many people, like, watch the, the, like, tournaments and stuff? It's crazy. For Dota and League, yeah. Yeah, like... I really don't like MOBAs. I thought I would. Because it's basically a versus action RPG. But, like, I hate them so much. Oh, dude, I love them. I like... I I really, like that's a lie. Them. That's a lie. I like playing them with friends. By yourself, it's kind of, like, hell. <laughs> yeah, two out of three MOBAs have accused me of being bots. I'm not that into it. I was in one of those matches. It was hilarious. <laughs> he was just like kind of doing his own thing and not with a team, and everyone thought he was yeah. a bot. I was, I like, was no. trying to follow you guys. I was playing a healer, but I couldn't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> like, Chris, get your horse. He's like, what horse? <laughs> oh my god. There was, oh, what was that MOBA that I played with Pete that was actually pretty fun? It was like a third person shooter and like the whole thing was like still attacking like you know um attacking the enemy core and attacking enemy units and shit but it was weird it was like it was kind of like an over the shoulder third person like action shooter type game it was pretty all right but the problem with mobas is if you can't like even break into the audience that dota and league have you're pretty much dead yep 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 100% yeah, they can't all get by on the PR or something like an OD pixel cast. Yeah. Okay, so 
on this topic, how do you guys feel about, like, do you have any games that you've played so much that you don't really feel like playing them, but you still like watching them? Uh, hmm. Like, I recently got back into Binding of Isaac because I started racing again. Um, but for a while, I wasn't really playing it too often. But I was watching it, like, almost every day I would look up runs or speed runs or something. Well, to be fair, I watch a lot of Northern Lion, and he does... Mostly for the Isaac. To be, actually, to be honest, at this point, I watch him mostly just to hear his, like, random conversations other, more than Isaac, but... Isaac has right. to be one of them. He's like, I have Isaac, but I haven't been playing it a lot, to be honest. Right. Uh, I go through that with some games, like, it, my, my, my life cycle with some, like, well, especially roguelites, where, like, you know, you play them, um, you go really hard on them, you get all the unlocks, and then you play till you're bored. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll play them really, really, really hard. And once I, like, beat everything, I'll take a break from it, and watch a bunch of people play it, watch a bunch of people speedrun it, and then at some point, I'll, like get into racing it or just do casual runs or something that's kind of my roguelite loop but uh there are some games where it's like i i mean that's the thing i love about um about twitch and and youtube becoming like huge content platforms because as a kid it was like i mean i you know don't get me wrong i watch my share of tv shows and movies and stuff I, i'm a big fan of that stuff but when i'm sitting around flipping channels as a kid i was always like I would rather watch someone play a video game or something, you know? I don't want to sit here and just watch some random, like, bullshit show on TV I have no interest in. You know, now that you say that, I would what? actually, uh, back in the day, I would like to watch my cousin play, um, Metroid... Which one, what was the one for 64? Super Metroid, yes. Uh, I would actually watch my cousin play Super Metroid rather than play it, because I thought it was, to be honest, a little scary at the time for me. Right, I think I remember you saying that. Um, that's... This is how I am with, um, games like Resident Evil, because, like, I'm terrible at playing them, but I love the story and I love the lore and everything, so I just make Chris play them, and I watch. <laughs> I know the struggles. Yeah. Yeah, at some point I just start yelling at her to calm down when I'm the one freaking out. <laughs> It didn't occur to me, but I've liked playing a lot of horror in the past, and it doesn't scare me anymore, so sometimes I actually watch Let's Plays for, forgive me, the reactions, because people actually getting scared. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you want to see about. people freak out about the game in a way that you can't anymore. <laughs> Chris, yeah, you want to like, feel alive. Do it that. I just want to watch The complete, Completionist, and uh, what's he doing that other, the, the uh, Scary Game Squad, that's it. Like, I sometimes watch those just to get an idea of new horror games coming out, and whether or not yeah. they're actually scary. Yeah. No, and, um, it's, it's just one of those things where, like, uh, you know, I'll still watch, you know, I'll just plop down in front of the TV and, like, you know, or, or now in this case for me, Hulu, because I don't really watch cable, but, like, I'll see what's on, maybe I'll watch, like, an episode of a show I've seen before, you know, if it would, the equivalent of a TV rerun or something, mm. but, you know... As a kid, I it, this isn't like anything new for me. The desire to like, oh, I'll watch other people play video games, like, dude, like eight year old me would have preferred that to watching like, because as a kid I would pretty much watch Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network, other than whatever I would watch with like my parents or whatever. So like, if there was a show on Nick that I didn't really like, and then there was a show on Cartoon Network I didn't really like, I was fucked. I, I had to basically just like do nothing if I felt like watching TV. Mm -hmm. Um. But now I could just be like, oh, what game have I been thinking about lately? I guess I'll watch somebody play that. Like, I don't know. It's really awesome that we can do that now because it's everything kid me wanted. Especially when I heard about, like, the, oh, the glory days of G4 before I had digital cable. <laughs> My friend was like, did you know there's a network about video games? I was like, no! And they went down the same road as uh, MTV where they kind of just like, oh, what are games? Didn't do what they were <laughs> the same Adam's Fest was hairline. <laughs> Oh, I like Adam Fessler. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm indifferent about any TV personality. But yeah. It's hard to be in favor of somebody who's pro-doxing, but that's a topic for another day. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, well, that kind of gets rid of um, but, um, but yeah, so there's... There's games that I definitely prefer watching, like, like I said, like TGM or like StarCraft or something. But I think that... Um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. I, uh, I think that also in general, there's just so many games that I may have overplayed, not overplayed, but I just don't, I'm not in the mood to play, or um, games that I've been playing and therefore like I want to watch more stuff about them. So that that there's a lot that goes into like wh what I'm watching at the time, but it's usually game related. If it's not like strictly like a TV show or movie I want to catch up on, I mean, there's just so much good game related content, especially and you know like like Eric said, people like uh, like the the NL crew who are like really big into commentary and like there's so the many games, games they play, like there's so many games they play that I would never ever think about playing. But like, but at the same time, watching like, them is like, oh yeah, this is great. It, exactly, and at the same time, you look at something like uh, his or anybody in in that realm. Their their commentary is good, but also the familiarity of a game that you're into makes for a good backdrop because you can zone out to the gameplay instead of. It, 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 for for someone like me who's really fidgety, it gives my my brain something to concentrate on while I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Without being distracted, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of like other games that I would actually watch more often than playing. Though it's tough because I like playing a lot of games. I think I come from this uh, a different direction than you guys because there's very few games I actually spectate that I don't play myself. No, like, that's that's what I'm saying. I agree with that. Except for like, like MOBAs, I don't watch very often because I don't really like them in general. But I can watch them with like friends. And RTSs I watch competitively because I'm interested in them, but I have no intent on getting to a level that would be, like, competitive. Like, the people but who are competitive in that game are wild. Yeah, but other than that, I'm with you, Chris, that, like, any game that I would watch, I'd probably play as well. Yeah, it's like, what was it recently, the last couple of weeks, somebody pitched you a full trilogy run of... Oh, games. robot. Full trilogy <laughs> run of... Hold on. Reboot your server. Dark Souls. <laughs> What's it, Dark Souls? Full trilogy Dark Souls. They didn't do it in chronological order, but they did the whole thing without getting hit once. Wow. Here's if it wasn't chronological. Holy shit. Yeah. I Whoa. didn't know it was the whole trilogy. I heard it was like, oh, they beat Dark Souls without getting like, He hit. did each of them once way before, but he was trying to do it all in one go. Uh, that guy's a wizard. Honestly. Yeah, he finished on Dark Souls 1 against Gwyn. I remember that. I was there. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I, was, like, I was there in the same sense as the all-terrain Venonet type thing. Like, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah. Twitch plays Pokemon. That was something I was glad to spectate because I was not going back to play the old Pokemon games. They've made some substantial improvements since those times. Did they? Right, and I think... Um, I guess that's why I... I don't know. There are certain games that I am interested in speedrunning. And I think that's why I like watching speedruns so much, is because they're... I love watching speedruns of, like, bad games. Um... Like, uh... Like, what was what that was over it thing? No, the one... Well, that's always fun to watch. But, like, a bad one I really like to watch is, um... Sonic 06. Oh, yeah. Is even even they, they, they have, like, problems. That, see, like, I think speedruns are more where this topic is for me, because, like I said, I... Yeah, play. Which we should also bring up watch. awesome games done fast. But I'm interested in seeing so much about how these people play the games efficiently, but there's only a couple games I speedrun myself. Um, so, you know, other than watching my games for strategies and stuff like that, uh, I like watching other games because I, I have no intention to play them in that way, but I'm still interested in seeing them played that way and like uh chris reminded me because i was watching a pokemon blue speed run the other day and it was incredible and entertaining and i got that little bit of like hey i get to watch pokemon blue without having to play it chris i also feel like you like um so many quality of life improvements are you like a big poke uh awesome games done fast person yes yeah we watch it every time it's on same i love that like like, it's like the nerdiest thing at uh, convention ever, but I love it. <laughs> well, and like... You raise a lot of money for a good cause with it, too. Yeah, true. Yeah. Especially when it comes to, like, if you want to kill the animals or save them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got the, uh, the coin 
that's like one side is save the animals, one side is kill the animals. Nice. It's like a big like a metal coin. Um, Which side do you go with? I don't know Super Metroid well enough to care. Hmm. Because remember, I'm the asshole who hasn't played it yet. So. Ew. Mm, Eric, I'd rather watch it anyway. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, they're, uh... Speedruns are really cool because they give you a new reason to, like... Live. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Eric, do I, do I have to call somebody, dude? No, we're good. Um... But it gives you, it, it breathes new life into a game that you may have had, like, otherwise very little interest in revisiting. You know, they have made a bunch of quality of life improvements to the Pokemon games, especially, even like, even the first-gen oh. games have got re-releases that are infinitely more playable. Like, but, I went back to play them, like the older ones, and my god, they really do make it so much better than the new ones. Right. So, watching somebody speedrun the old ones is a really neat excuse to revisit them without having to actually revisit them. Yeah. Um, so, I, I like stuff like that. Uh, Same, I can dig it. Chris, do you watch a lot of speedruns? Uh, the only ones I really go for are Devil May Cry, Mega Man, and Bayonetta. Devil May Cry. Which Mega Man ones do you watch? Just anything in the Mega Man series, pretty much? Pretty much anything Mega Man. Uh... I think I watch more X than regular Mega Man, though. It's been a while. Really? Is X only with Zero? Yes. Okay. But yeah. I was waiting on Chris to expand that point because I says there. We say is there anything like about X specifically? Uh, off the top of my head, I think it may have been the music. It Zero's a bad dude who doesn't give any. Fudge. That's honestly not a bad reason, though. It's like, if you're going to be watching somebody replay this game a hundred times to get the best time, you want to make sure you have at least something to entertain your ears. Yeah. I, it's I, not all <laughs> Mega Man 2 Dr. Wily's Castle themes. Yeah. I think the big difference for me in watching speedruns uh, in the Mega Man series is X is very movement heavy. Like, it's very quick. It's very... Uh, it's, it's very flashy. Um, whereas the original series is... Um, more deliberate. It's more, more placement oriented than movement oriented. There's yeah. more like planning for the attacks than there is dodging them. Absolutely. Uh, and and that's why I like watching both, but I also I as a kid I played both Mega Man Legends games, but I've never beaten them because again, child switch between <laughs> games a lot. Mm -hmm. Um but I love them and as an adult I intend once I get my uh my setup a little more set up I want to go and play through them, so uh, I, I, I heavily intend to watch speedruns of those. Because it's like, all the, the cool stuff about speedrunning a Mega Man game, you know, the, the deliberate placement and planning and, you know, the combat, but it's, you know, in the 3D world, it's an RPG, there's, you know, you have to, like, what missions should you be avoiding and which should you be doing, so I think that'll be really cool, because I like watching, uh, I like watching longer games, too. So like, how do you feel like about things. how do you feel about um, speedrunners who use glitches to like skip like half the game? Would I, you rather see I, them go through the whole thing laboriously it, or? It's, it, it's interesting that you ask that um, because I also will deliberately search for glitchless runs and you know for regular runs mm. uh, because I think that there's something. I don't know. There's there's something for me to appreciate everywhere. I watch a lot of glitched runs because, you know, the uh, the software geek in me likes seeing how they break games. Yeah. That are otherwise really like, I mean, some more than others, but they've been tested, they've been refined, so that this shit doesn't happen. Yeah, um, my favorites for those are probably the big open world RPGs where it should take you between tens and hundreds of hours per yeah. run. Yeah, somebody get speedrunners that are able to do it in under an hour. That's why I really like the Zelda speedruns because they're always like that crazy. And the cool thing about those is instead of like you still get to watch for like the better part of an hour and it still holds your interest. It's not like over in five minutes, but at the same time, it's not like a ten-hour commitment. So that's that's yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. But um, for certain games like uh especially the collectathon games like Banjo Kazooie and uh, Mario 64 and stuff like that. I really, really love 100% glitchless because that's how I played the games growing up. 
I was the completionist. I had to get everything, and I never glitched anything. I didn't like cheating. I mean, I would put in cheat codes and have fun with it, but I would never actually try and beat the game with cheat codes. You know, if I was sitting down to beat a game, I would beat the game. Like uh, fair and square. So I love, love watching 100% glitchless category, um, because it, um, it it reminds me of like exactly how I used to and still play games you know I like to take my time and get everything but they're just doing it as fast as they can and I think that's fucking awesome like young Eric used to think like oh that's just cheating like of course it's cheating but like it's like I'd rather see a guy like go through everything but like nowadays like when I watch awesome games done fast I'm amazed by some of the glitches they find I'm like blown away well and that's what the thing I like about any percent is like you have stuff like uh have you guys seen the Mario World record no. Oh, I should wait, wait, wait. That's a bad way of wording that. Yeah. The Super Mario World world record. <laughs> no, what what is it? So basically you do a setup. I can't explain it as well as the people who do it, but um you get to level two. Uh I think it's the one on the left side or the right side. whichever is like one of the first levels on the uh left or right when you start in the in Yoshi's house. Mm -hmm. and you do a setup with a Koopa shell um, and a fireball. So what you do is you... How do I put this? You basically have Yoshi in the level, and you eat an enemy as it turns into a coin from the fireball killing it, and it overwrites a piece of the the code that should generate the next action and the game doesn't know what to do so it puts the credits up that's insane yep. it's so bizarre it's something like a minute and 32 seconds yeah. I, I, I i'm probably wrong on that but you, you get the idea um i love that and that's exactly it. i love that because it, it's an insight on how you can trick the game's code into working against itself and it's so interesting so you think but that's like trial and error or do you think they like data mine that stuff you're like oh I yeah. think it's, look at this loop I, right here that we can break it depends on the game uh but a lot of it goes into um knowing how the game is programmed so and and the, the good thing is especially with retro games well not just retro games modern games it's a little easier because well i would argue it might be easier because it's just computer code instead of like hardware specific coding Mm -hmm. um but with retro gaming it's simpler so if you know how every nes game was programmed you can find those logic loops and if you know that like the game places where you are in the game based on certain setups well if it doesn't know what it's gonna do it would probably eject you to the credits right and you can try stuff like that i'm not speaking for the community i don't really know but i know there's a lot of talented people who know a lot about game programming and data mining is absolutely a big part of it. Um, some people do get lucky. Uh, a friend of mine's claim to fame is that he discovered the Knuckles Chaotix debug menu on the 32X. Oh, cool. Um, guess how he found out? How? He bumped his cartridge while it was in the 32X. <laughs> oh. But he was the first guy to, like, figure that out. <laughs> like, I wonder how you, like, what you do when you do that. You're like, oh shit, I must tell everyone, or like... I'm keep the secret yeah. to myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he's like me in the sense that, like, he's uh, all about, like, preservation and sharing the love and stuff like that. So, like, hey, this the community should probably know about this. There's a lot of enthusiasts who would like to know. So, uh, yeah, he's still credited to this day, I believe. Who was that? It was Pete. Wait, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you the article later. What? That's Before cool. Yeah. So like, um, you just go like to write it, be like, "Hey guys, so <laughs> I know about this." But yeah, I like watching, you know, any percent for stuff like that because it's you know, oh my god, it's so crazy how they broke the game and they know about the coding. That's fucking incredible. But sometimes I just want to see all of Mario World, so I don't care how fast it is. I want to see all of it. Well, okay, I'm not gonna watch it at, like 10x speed, but like mm -hmm. I want to see all of it. So, I'll watch, like, a 100% run, glitchless, because 
it's the best of both worlds. I get to see somebody with incredible skill play through a game, but at the same time, it's not um, it's not like two minutes and it's done. Also, I really like the fact that speedruns have categories. I think that's one of the best ideas. Yeah, ever. like any percent or... Yeah, because yeah. like I said, um, it's one of those things where you can do a lot of cool different things. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Like, uh, I do love... What was it? I think uh, Morrowind has a crazy speed run where uh, you can oh, be within yeah. eight you minutes. You just get high off your ass on Skooma and just you're basically breaking <laughs> the physics of the game to jump across the map over and over. Really? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I know what we're watching later. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can finish that whole main campaign in, like, eight minutes. I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, now. that's what I've heard. Eight Jeez. minutes. Jeez. To be honest, I gave up on Dude, it took me Marwin. eight minutes to learn the controls when I was a kid. Dude, I hated Marwin because I spent about eight minutes stabbing a mud crab and it killed me because I was playing an <laughs> orc. And I didn't know back in the day speed was tashy accuracy. So I was just standing there stabbing a crab, missing every <laughs> shot, and the crab was just like, poke, poke. I mean, oh tweeze, God. tweeze, tweeze. <laughs> I barely knew anything about RPGs when uh, my friend got Morrowind, uh, and I was there, like, the, I, I remember I went to his house, and he was like, uh, his mom was like, oh yeah, he's out at the store, you know, him and his dad are picking up an Xbox, and I just looked at her and I'm like, okay, I was like super excited, he gets back home, we, we plug it in, we play Morrowind, one of the first things we do is start a fight with a guard, <laughs> and... <laughs> We didn't know what was going to happen, and then all of a sudden, our character just got sandwiched between two claymores. In Oblivion, I got the king to attack me. Nice. The king? Yeah. Holy He's shit. He's like, stop attacking me. Stop Patrick Stewart. He's like, stop attacking me. Stop attacking me. Stop attacking me. And then I kept attacking him, and then he just got really pissed off. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yep, kind of. And Glory to the Picard. Uh, I got why don't we start on the oh, next subject? I know what I want. The bell. Ah, the Oh, and speaking of really broken, fast games, did you guys Chris, see what Chris, happened? Chris, please, please. The shame of the week bell is tolling. They can't hear it. Though. I know. I'm... Okay, I can't hear it, so just go on. Okay. Right. <laughs> go on. What were you saying, Chris? I was just saying, if you like really broken, fast games, did you see what happened with the uh, recent PC re-release of Devil May Cry 1? No. 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 Turbo mode was fucked. What do you mean? Like, Fucked how? Was too turbo or not turbo enough? No, I mean, it wasn't properly capped to the frame rate, and the in-game movement was tied to the frames. Oh, so everything no. was going, like, ten times faster. <laughs> oh. oh. I think it was, like, the Havoc yeah. Banger or something like that I was watching, and it's like, you literally could not time menus quickly enough because of, like, it would take a single arrow press as three or four, so you couldn't get in and out of menus properly, even. Whoa. Oh that's my incredible. god. That's hilarious. That's the anti-shame of the week. That's the, that's the fame of the week. <laughs> that's beautiful. Okay, so... Like, it's bell, turbo mode on steroids, but continue. What do you got? The bell hath told. Dong. Chris, lay it on us. You got so, the shame of the week, my dude. The for the shame of the week, we are unfortunately too late to bring up EA's recent Pride and Accomplishment modded loot boxes. However, they have risen to the occasion. And within the loot box, we have found a DLC within a DLC. What? For anyone who's a fan of The Sims, you know those games just shovel out DLC like nobody's business. I believe we're already over $100 just for the most recent Sims for yeah. getting all the DLC. And now, if you want to get some of the uh, features for the Pets DLC, you have to get a DLC on top of that. Wait, what? It's not just you get one or the other. This DLC is dependent on the first one. It's a DLC for the DLC. Yo, dog, I heard you like DLC, so I got a DLC for your DLC. You know, normally I'd shame Eric for using an old meme, but it's pretty appropriate. <laughs> wait, wait, so I, I, I thought I Sims was dead. No. Yeah, I thought it's they canceled still it. so big. Oh, okay. I don't think it's as good anymore, but... No, it's not, but... Okay, well, I'm wrong then. But yeah, what so... What the fuck are they doing? No, I love it. Wrong. This is hilarious. This is almost as bad as, like... A ten dollar save file, but that's so much worse. So, can you like elaborate a little bit on like what exactly the details of that is? Like, what 
specifically it was small pets, something like uh, gerbils, hamsters, that kind of thing, that were okay. excluded from the original pets package. So you need the. You need the inter. You need the previous DLC, or you need to buy the pets DLC, DLC oh, so to you, buy you more can't, pets. You can't buy the small pets without the. No, it's not a small pets DLC. It's a small pets DLC for the pets DLC. I see. Holy shit! That, that is... is. Who was the intern that was like, "Let's push the envelope. We're getting that promotion." Probably one of the executives. I don't know, but I think they <laughs> timed it perfectly to hide the story under the loot box renovations. True. Maybe that's their. This was a sacrificial goat for them. <laughs> yeah. The question is, which one did they want us to not know about more? True. Uh, that's a good question, but that that will come up. Um, uh, that's pretty funny. I just, dude, so I don't I, play Sims. I don't know that much about the franchise, and that's I know it's a much. DLC for a DL fucking C. I know too much about the Sims that I care to admit. <laughs> yeah, Taylor and I habitually bump the soundtracks on Spotify. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Which, by the way, PSA, they're on Spotify. And they're bangers. <laughs> Classic bangers. I'm actually, like, I don't know what to say, except it's a DLC for a That's DLC. So uh, That's guys, great. Just don't buy EA. Yeah, dude, I haven't or, bought or, from no, EA. No, 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 actually, I'm okay with buying from EA if they do something right, which is I'm go what I'm Reward going to get them into. like a dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, like a shitty dog. From EA, even. I think it was Titanfall 2? Something like that? I will say that... Oh, wasn't um, Titanfall 2 incredible? It was a major step up from the first one, which, admittedly, I only played out on a friend's place. But Titanfall 2 actually had a proper story, and when it gave I started giving me the, the Iron one. Giant feels, I knew I was going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> And all the main DLC stuff was free. It's like you only paid in for cosmetic stuff, and it was just for quicker unlocks. It wasn't paid exclusive. Okay. I would like to say that actually, I really like that they have origin origins, because I haven't actually bought a uh, EA game in maybe like six years at this point. Wow. Mostly because I don't see them on Steam, because I'm never tempted. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. True. Oh wait, that's right. Now I remember why I don't buy EA games anymore. The last game I bought from them was Andromeda. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, about that. Rip. I, I heard you love that one. lost another good writer. He retired twice now. Maybe twice. Uh, he so, was very uh, eclectic with his idea of leaving the team. Let's put it that way. What, okay. did he leave and come back and then leave again? Miyazaki? Yeah, he <laughs> left to do some solo projects, <laughs> then he came back for, uh, I think it was Inquisition. And he stuck around past Andromeda. But now he's okay. gone, so they yeah. don't have him for Anthem or the next uh, Dragon Age. Miyazaki. Well, so, we'll ride this EA train into the next topic. Um, choo choo. Apparently, EA is getting rid of the loot boxes in Battlefront, <laughs> which is like good. However, it's is it good, is it too I little think, too late? Yes, I don't think. I've heard a lot like, of people say that. It, 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 you know, my opinion is that I I'm not going to buy it, even though it looks fun. I th they have to. I think the there respect. needs to be a balance. I, I, yeah, I think there, there needs to be a balance. Like I said, it's not that, oh, never buy from EA again, because at that point you're just setting, you know, you're setting a precedent that once you fuck up, you're irredeemable. Why should we bother? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, like if they change the thing that was making the big deal to you, then I think support it if you can. Here's the thing, though. They didn't change what was bothering me most, because we still have what's pretending to be an Empire story when the protagonists flip faction within the first act. Ooh, true, yeah. yeah I didn't know true. that about I never got that far into Battle To be Party fair, I don't think they actually care about the story. It was only like four hours, right? What? Yeah, they got this lady, I think she's from that Sleeping Hollow TV show, and she she presents like a dominatrix, but she's really just like your standard snarky stormtrooper type thing as an elite. And okay. she like goes turncoat on the Empire, I think two chapters later, after they somehow turn on her planet to make a PR move, and it obviously fails because Empire. <laughs> and yeah. It. What I wanted was a well-told Star Wars story from the Empire side because we barely ever get that. Mm -hmm. Oh, agreed. And but like, from oh. we don't even get good combat in the single-player stuff. It's like I was hearing stuff about where the Luke Skywalker segments are just tower defense, where you're meleeing a bunch of infinite spawns. Ew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now and that sounds terrible, but for the people who were into the multiplayer idea, it would still be worth supporting if they, you know, the multiplayer was well tooled. 
Yeah, and it's like if you, you got a good time with the beta, then this is the time to get in. The game's at least uh, 30% off from the st original retail launch. And, you know, someone like you would be well within their rights to write a review saying, you know, two stars, I play for campaign, I'm not the one to ask about story. I mean, for a uh, multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I, I'm here for the story and the campaign play. And I thought it was underwhelming, it wasn't well written. 7.8 out of 10, not enough pride and accomplishment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the problem here is that I think the game is... Should, I don't think people should support Battlefront. I think they, Which is sad because I love the original Battlefront. No, no, absolutely. But I think the, the big issue here is that you're potentially showing EA that they can do whatever they want and then Fix it after. apologize later. Yeah. yeah. You have to show them that, no, it's not going to... I mean, and the royal you. I mean, this is just my personal opinion. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm going to be not getting into it because... Even though the, they removed the thing that bothered me, supposedly, you know, I'll, I'll admit I, I don't know every single little detail. Um, the principle is that it shouldn't have been like that in the first place. Also, they need to learn their lesson because they, oh, well, we'll take them out for now and put them back in later. How's that? No, oh. that's not. That's not. Game By the way, bad. I really like that voice. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's my, uh, oh, excuse me, sir, I have a, a uh, formal complaint. Uh, I got yelled at in the, in the aisle. I don't like to file a complaint. Stefan <laughs> What? Stefan Recall. Any matters now? You're a robot. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, sorry, you roboted, so I didn't know uh, what the fuck you were saying. <laughs> sorry. The... Um, he can't fix that. Oh, my God, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> this was eventually going to lead to a Sonic reference. Forget it. No, 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 I want to hear the Sonic reference! Go! Do it! Okay, Eggman, do it. <laughs> hey, kids, do you remember going all robot on Twitch? Well, Pepper's a steady does. ISP is for winners! <laughs> and... <laughs> Jaleel White was the voice of Sonic and Urkel, there you go, it's over. <laughs> oh, okay. Godspeed. Godspeed. Um, but yeah, so I mean, like, I'm, I'm not gonna be supporting the game because they did the whole... We're doing this shitty business practice. Wait, no, we're not, guys. Just kidding. Wait, yeah, we're... we're <laughs> LLJK. Yeah, so they have to learn, like, don't fucking put it in. And, you know, it, it, let's say in the future. Let, let's say with Anthem, right? So... Let's say they learn their lesson. Ha, ha, ha. And they make a good game that doesn't rely on, you know, nickel and diming you after you buy the game. Ha, ha, ha. I'll but, buy it because that shows that they're learning something from the start. Oh, and straight if up. If they introduce something later on, I will stop playing it and, you know, I'll do my little part in writing an email saying, like, hey guys, I love the game. I bought it because after what you did with, um, with Battlefront, I feel you learned your lesson. But clearly you still want to nickel and dime me unfairly, so I will not be playing the game anymore. And, you know, it's is it going to make a difference? Not unless a ton of people do it, but I can at least say I did my part. Uh, but as it is right now, Battlefront, it, like you know, like we said, too little, too late. It's not enough to win me over. You've already tainted the nature of the game to the point where I am not comfortable supporting it. I don't know if you'll go back on your decision to go back on it. I, who knows at this point? The game is clearly... Well, and also, this is their first big punishment. This is the first real, real time that EA has had it thrown back in their face... Yeah, they got a ton of negative PR for recent stuff, but this is the first one I think might have impacted the bottom line. Yes. So, like, and the question is... Because is like, of that, I think this game needs to suffer and die until the very end to prove the true point. So, question. To um, do you think they did this because of public outlash or low sales, or do you think it's because investors are like, guys, where's our money? <laughs> well, I think Disney was pissed. To go with the foreign language meme... Poor K lo no sleep. Fuck me. <laughs> what? Why not both, goddammit? Poor K no los dos. Oh, okay. My pronunciation's better than that, I'm just being a dick. Um, it's probably that the bad PR got the investors mad. <laughs> mm hmm. So, they, I, I, so, if I had to guess. They piss off Papa so Mouse. Advice for how to approach Battlefront 2 is basically to quote The Last Jedi. It has done nothing but advise us on how to get rid of Star Wars in its current state. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Yay, Let Kylo Ren. Die. And, uh, you know, 
I, I I think I really do think Disney is gonna go and probably pick someone else for other Star Wars games. I wonder uh, how long the contracts last you for. Yeah, they probably they just won't make any games. <laughs> I don't care who's making them as long as they bring back thirteen thirteen. Who's thirteen thirteen? It was going to be their, like, Bounty Hunter game. Oh, oh wait, is that going to be, like, the single-player one? Yeah, they got one of the people from Uncharted. What's her name? Amy... Amy Hedden? Oh, that would have been so remember. nice. Like, they got one of the writers from Uncharted, and it was before Uncharted 4, mind you, so we actually still had hope for the writing. And it was Star Wars. And we were getting a we just Star Wars from there. the Uncharted writer. You know what I would love? Um, I really want another Knights of the Old Republic that's not MMO. It wasn't an MMO. No, the, the, like the newest one is an MMO. Oh, you mean like the Old Republic? Yeah, like I love Knights of the Republic. Knights of the Old Republic. Well, is Corgels still getting expansions? I believe so. I could be wrong, but like I like, want. I know that's the I've never played it since. What year is it now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like been a while. I haven't played it either. But like, I would love to go back and play like a good old fashioned Knights of the Old, old Republic. So you want another action RPG? Yes. Nice. Okay. I would Just love give it to that. Obsidian and maybe hire a couple extra QA teams and give them enough time to finish the ending. Yep, yeah, that'd be great. If only. But yeah, um, but yeah so I, I actually, despite what other people may think about the trailer and, oh god, the horribly, horribly done acting in it, I think Anthem looks like it could be a fun game to play with friends, but I am keeping a close eye on any bullshit they're going to try and pull with it. Same here. Like, I really want to play Anthem, but, like, if... I'm not going to pre-order it. That's just, like, oh, a God, dumb no. decision. But, yeah, like... I'm not going to buy it unless it shows that it's not going to be loaded with all the typical EA bullshit. Yep. And, oh, my... I got so sad every time I would think about all the old games that EA would make. EA used to be like the top yeah. of the third party. Mm. I mean, you, you look at an EA game, we're talking like Road Rash, Might and Magic, um, didn't they the do... Sims, uh, well, like the Sims? Yeah, the original Sims? The original Sims. Um, Am I misremembering, or did they do a bunch of Lord of the Rings games? I um, think... Wait, d didn't they do Harry Potter games too? Yeah, and I think some of the I remember Harry it was Potter like games PS1 was Harry Potter decent. games. It was ages ago. Yeah. Chris, was it you who read out that EA's mission statement was to like make games that made people happy or something like that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't have their statement up here, but we did that many episodes ago. Mm. Yep. And it just makes me sad. They made so many good games. Now well, when you say EA, it's in the game, they mean your credit card info. Yep. yep. <laughs> Also, they have like a. They also have like a crushing um, weight over sports games. Yeah. Like, if you want yeah, a sports man, game. I'm sick of like. A lot of the monetization they've been trying to slip under the rug. But this has been going on in sports games for ages. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, and they've still been making it worse. <laughs> Come on, guys. Um, I'd be impressed we, uh... if they were pissed. Can we talk about sports games next week? I think that'll be a cool topic. I don't the play only sports one games. I play is Blood Bowl. I can't help on that topic. Yeah, no, I think here. that's why it'll be a fun topic because none of us are real sports fans. I can bring in my friend who likes uh, to play FIFA. That could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at that behind the curtain. Yeah, he's the Planning most non-gaming gamer you know you can never meet. But like, he plays Call of Duty and FIFA, so he's super basic. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't make fun of him. Okay, cool. So I, actually, I will. One, I, I, I was never one of those people anyway. Like, I'll joke about it, but, like, I mean, just because, like, if you have an Xbox because you play, like, FIFA and Call of Duty and that's it, like, that's fine. As long as you're not a dick about it, I don't really give a shit. Dude, I was like, yo, buy um, a PS3 over, I mean, PS4 over Xbox One. He's like, but no. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're lost. <laughs> Dude, uh, can we, uh, super off topic, but speaking of Xbox One, can we talk about like the sadness that Scalebound is not a thing? That what isn't a We're thing? We're a couple months late to the party, but okay. Yeah, Scalebound. It was going to be... Oh, um, oh my god, dude. It was dude. a Platinum Games production, and it was going to be Xbox One exclusive. Basically, the main character looked like Dante, 
kind of DMC five ish, but also yeah, pet dragon like Nero. He had a pet dragon that was also involved in the combat, and he had this like prototype type uh, arm thing, body armor. Yeah, it was, kind of, it was kind of Monster Hunter, kind of Devil May Cry. And then and, like apparently they had a lot of issues behind the scenes with like um, the company who was like uh, funding them, and they're like, "Fuck it, we're done." <laughs> Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So, yeah, what's our next topic? So, Sega is doing a thing, and I, I don't understand anymore. I really don't. They are releasing a Genesis collection. Um, now, there's... Releasing it on... Well, that's what I'm going to get to. So, there, there's, there's one on Steam already. It used to just be a little app that launched, and... You would buy into the, the the portal app was free, um, and you would download games as DLC. But you know, just in other words, they gave you the program for free to run them, and then you would just purchase games piecemeal, which is cool. That's fine, whatever. Um, and the thing I liked about it, and the reason I did it, even though you know, it's it's I have a lot of these games anyway. I have access to them. But I got them because they had Steam Workshop support. So mm. people could mod them, and they're all Genesis games. Fucking awesome, right? And then they did a really neat little update where the menu system was you're in like a like a like a teenager's bedroom kind of setup. Like you have like posters on the wall and like little sonic statues. It's really cute. And your games are on a bookshelf. And that's how you pick what games you own. Um and you can, like, kind of do cute little things to customize the room and stuff. And now, a trailer leaked for the new collection. Sega was not ready to release it yet. Um, now, basically, from what they've shown, it's that game that's on Steam. But the problem is, it's being marketed in the, in the trailer as PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Now, are they just reiterating that it's already there? Or are they adding something new to it and re-advertising it so people are interested. Um, either way, I'm not calling false advertising. False. Like, I'm um, going to say that hopefully they're just saying, reiterating, like, hey, we're on Steam, guys, go buy it. Yeah, right. Hopefully. But... Yeah, like, uh, was just this past week they announced Skyrim, it's a different company, Bethesda announced Skyrim VR was coming to PC, and it's been out on PS4 for a while. No mention of the exclusivity anymore, just... This game had already exists, now it's coming here. Mm. And right. I would not be surprised if Sega was trying to market this as if it were new, because it's better to say it's a new release than it is a port. Yep. I agree. Um, but, okay, so... Here's my problem, though. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, off the top of my head, there is... Um, I'm trying to think. Hold on. There have been Genesis collections for Game Boy Advance, for PS2, for PSP, for the DS, for the 3DS, I think DS, but probably, but 3DS I know there have been, PS3, 360, like, how many times do they need to give us Altered Beast and fucking, you know, Comic Zone and Golden Axe? They're amazing games, I'm not mad about that. But, like, let's face it, everyone has the opportunity to play these games in a lot of ways. You don't have to keep releasing them for whatever console is new, first of all. Second of all, they never fucking mixed the games up. I was, like, ecstatic that the one for 360 had Decap Attack on it. And the only thing that made the, uh, the 360 and PS3 one worth playing, like, versus other ones, was the achievements gave you a little something to do. You know, it gave you little goals to hit. But mm -hmm. most of them were pretty basic. Actually, if I, uh... Wait, let's see. Uh, Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection Achievements. Well, the alternative to redoing these collections over and over again would be releasing good games in the present day to turn a profit, and <laughs> that requires nah. effort. That's very true. Meanwhile, like, what is Sega publishing recently that would be worth recollecting? I mean, the only thing that comes to mind is... Well, don't they, they have, have a... That Nintendo exclusivity there. Wasn't they there, like, a new Total War that just came out? Don't they okay, Just real quick before I get off my tangent of achievements, the fucking, 
the, the achievement for Echo the Dolphin was to talk to another dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is literally, I think, the first thing you learn to do other than swim. Um, okay, there's but... a ton of PS3 games that, stupidly enough, actually give you trophies just for hitting the start button to open the main menu. No, but I'm like, saying, like... you start playing the game. <laughs> when there's only one achievement for each game on that collection... Really? It doesn't even give you something... Yeah, it doesn't even what? give you something to strive for. Yeah. Okay, that's there's a big... like. Because there's, like, okay. 30 games on the Sonic Genesis collection, so they're like, oh, some of them are tough. Like, I mean, not not all of them are, like, super hard, but, like, okay, Altered Beast, get 10,000 points by the end of the first level. I don't think that's, like, automatic. You kind of have to go out of your way for it. But Echo, talk to another dolphin. Like, that's way, way different than, like, actually shoot for a high score. But anyway, that aside, one of the things people are worried about is it wasn't announced for Switch. And... I'm I'm sick of people beating the portability horse to death. But I do agree that for something like a Genesis collection, its only excuse at this point is portability. Mm. Um that's the only selling point anymore is that, you know, most of the systems that this uh that these collections came out on were either home consoles or a little underpowered. So yeah, depending on how many works for it as well as the 3DS, right? What? Didn't they have a 3DS collection as well or Yeah. And it was like it can work. It's just they're not doing it for some reason. Exactly. Well, we don't know yet because that was the pre-release of the trailer that they said they weren't ready to announce yet. So maybe they're just finalizing something. But at the end screen, it looked pretty finished that they arranged all the consoles deliberately. But I don't know if they're going to respace everything once they get the go ahead for the Switch. I'm not sure. But yeah. I just think they also need to like they need to mix up the games. There's so many like interesting games. They don't even have to all be great games. People I think would get a kick out of like if you gave them like thirty good games and like five crap ones, it would be like, oh haha, they weren't all bangers, right guys? I think that could be cool. Mm. I agree. I mean, especially when ROMs are so fucking tiny. And and the other thing that bothers me about these collections is they charge like twenty to forty dollars for them. They're not worth that anymore. As, not just because they're old games. I mean, you know, I love old games, obviously. But you know, not only are you selling me a twenty-year-old ROM, you're also selling me a collection of them. That if I still have a three sixty or a PS three, which is not unlikely, I can go to the store and buy a used copy of Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection for like ten bucks. Yeah, so like, at this point, I think they're really, really rubbing against the idea that it's without backwards compatibility on the most recent consoles. It's actually better if you just get the ROMs online rather than going through the paid collections. So to be because, honest, yeah. I would love to buy them if they had a really nice collector's case. Yeah, like yeah but at it, that point, Sonic you're not Mania selling me on the Sonic. games. What was that Sonic Collector's Edition that came out recently? Where it Oh, had yeah, my a, friend sent me a link to that. It had, like, a... A miniature console as a stand for the statue or something. Oh, no, that's one. the one that I got when it came out. That's the Collector's Edition. Yeah, it's like, if you had a Collector's Edition of your Genesis collections like that, where it's like, here's a knickknack to remind me of the days when I played this console... I could see that working a bit better than just recollecting the ROMs over and over again and porting it to a new console. Well, that bothers me a little bit because I I don't like feeling rushed to spend my money. I, I, I hate that. Um, I would rather Sega just put out a game, a good game, and I mean this with other companies too, I'm just talking about Sonic Mania specifically. Even though I got the Collector's Edition, I could afford it at the time. It was worth the money, it wasn't expensive, but... I would rather, comparatively, I would rather them put out a game and a statue as two separate products. Don't make me feel like I have to spend the money because, well, if the collector's edition sells out, I can't get the statue anywhere. You know, like, crazily enough, that was actually a thing for a couple of years, and of all places, EA was doing it. Like, really? I think the one that most caught my eye was probably Battlefield 1, where they sold the collector's edition statue, steelbook, and all of that separate from the base game. They See, also that's did it cool. for uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and there's probably a couple more I can't think of off the top of my head. Yeah, like, the I think there's that... a lot to like there. Um, What were you going to say? The thing is that what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that at first. The thing is that they were charging as much for the collector's editions without the game as they would have been charging for previous collector's editions that included the game. So there was a markup uh, in the process of buying them separately. Right. It's like, let's say you bought a collector's edition of 
uh, what was the last one? Uh, probably Mass Effect 3, for example. Mm-hmm. Like, the deluxe edition, collector's edition for that thing was probably, like, what, 80, 90 bucks? Versus if you got Battlefield 1, the base game was 60, and the collector's edition on top of that was, like, 80 or 100. Yeah. Um, also, uh, this is not a slight against you, Chris. It's a slight against Sega. Um... You just said, well, to be fair, what would they make at this point? I'm going to... I have a list of Sega franchises here. And I want to go through the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to go through... Please do. I want to like Sega again. They're still publishing Bayonetta. Right. (laughs) Um, I'll go through games that the main developer was Sega or AM2 or Sonic 2. Because those are actually, like, really Sega... Some of the other ones, I can't tell if they're real subsidiaries or not. Like, uh, like Condemned was published by Sega, but it was developed by Monolith. And I don't know if that's a subsidiary of Sega or not, so I'm not going to count it. So anything Sega AM2, which is the arcade division, uh, and home, but mainly they do arcade games. Uh, Sega themselves, or, um, like I said, uh, Sonic Team. So let's see, we have... Uh, why, don't you, why don't you sort it so you can just... That is a very good idea. Thank you, Taylor. You're so smart. That wasn't sarcasm. You are so... Uh, Baku Baku Animal, Blazing Heroes, Border Break, Clockwork Knight. Great game. I'll, I'll, I'll emphasize which ones I actually know. Columns. Great fucking game. Congo Bongo. That was a really old one. Uh, Dinosaur King. Doki Doki Penguin Land. Dragon Force. They could totally fucking bring back. Um, Dynamite Baseball. Dynamite Ducks. Which I don't know what the. F- uh, hold on, give me. I, what? Uh, it's about ducks, all right. Um, <laughs> Eternal Champions, they could try and get back into the fighting game. Uh, Fantasy Zone, they could still fucking instead of rehashing the old ones, they could make a new Fantasy Zone game. Golden Axe, they didn't fuck that up on the 360, but uh, they're still making Project Diva. Um, Head on. Hero Bank, Joe Montana Football, guys. Uh, the k games are still being made. Uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth is a little weird because that was like also a series uh, that's more of a license thing. Uh, Manx TT Superbike, Mushi King, King of the Beatles, um, Pro Striker, so, you know, they could get back into soccer games. Rent-A-Hero, they could, you know, do those RPGs again. Uh, soccer Wars, same thing. Uh, Super Monkey Ball, even though they were, they they're still doing that on and off. Yeah. Um, Just ports. Yeah. Like, you know. Thunderblade. Uh, they can make more of Yakuza. Yeah, they're still doing. Um, Zaxxon, Afterburner, Fighting Vipers, Hang On, Shenmue is coming back. So I yeah. can't even say that. Space Harrier, Virtua Cop, Virtua Fighter. Although to be fair, people stopped playing that, and that's why they stopped making them. Uh, Virtua Racing, Daytona. They could bring back to home instead of just making it an arcade game. Uh, Hang on a Outrun. I may have been the one person who bought Virtua Fighter 14. Hold on a sec. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mean five? Your poor fool. What was the. Hold on. I'm going to go check my library. I'll be right back. Well, they're still Keep making talking. Initial D. It's just an arcade yeah. game. Uh, I would love to see Sega Rally come back. Yes, yeah, Sega Rally, Shinobi, Street Okay, it's Game Fighters. I'm blind. Yep. Oh, okay. I'll play that with you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Fantasy Star, Jet Set Radio, fucking Knights, uh, Choo Choo Rocket, uh, let's see, Panzer Dragoon, um, Herzog, they could get into the tactical game again. You're tactical games are huge software. now. Oh, that's right. They only published that. Fuck. Yeah. Same with Panzer Dragoon. Yeah. It was just published. They might be able to get, get away with Panzer Dragoon, though. I don't know. But yeah, so as you see, there's a ton of shit that they could fucking do. So many good titles. Yeah. Uh, I, and I, I apologize, you know, if that was rambly for any of our listeners, but I had to drive the point home. I feel like they want to move more to just publishing, though, at this point. Yeah. The, Probably. I, I think the majority, the only... I think, like, the only games that they um, are still currently making that weren't just published by them is like the um project diva and initial d arcade what else and they're still trying to keep sonic away from deviant art there's a lot of talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sonic. it's not gonna, it's gonna happen fight. dude did you see the uh new sonic cartoon where they're actually 
a bit more self-aware of this kind of stuff. No. Yeah, I haven't watched full episodes, but I've seen clips. Have you seen the the one about feminism? The Knuckles quote? Knuckles cannot beat Mr. Torque on this, but keep going. I want to hear it. You you have to look it up. Chris, can you you can quote it. Let's look see. Wait, wait. Quote. Wait. It's uh No, you have to get a word for word. Oh god. Look do it on your phone. So I can Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm sorry. Um it, and it was again, like you said, it was a really like self-aware comment that was made. So great. Chris is looking it up now. Yeah. It, so Amy says something about uh oh, I don't remember on. what she said. No, no, no. I I know what she said. I'm just looking for the actual quote. I have um, his homemade Sonic body pillow. Okay, for so purely non creepy reasons. <laughs> Amy says, "Can the young mm. woman woman break the glass ceiling and prove once and for all that a female can be just as good an athlete as a male?" And Knuckles just comes back with, "You know, Amy. Anytime someone calls attention to the breaking of gender roles, it ultimately undermines the concept of gender equality by implying that this is an, ex is an exception and not the status quo." And everyone just looks at him <laughs> and he says, "What? Just because I'm a meathead doesn't mean I'm not a feminist." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Knuckles is woke. I know. He pretty much looks at Amy and says, stop caring so much about if you're a woman and act like it's normal for a woman to be good at things. Well, shit. Um, so I know there was that, and then there was the one with, like, the, um... The viral sensation one, where it's talking about how, like, they're talking about earworms, or Amy is, and then Sonic's like, or the place where they post those creepy pics of me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, and then there was the what was like the really creepy fan. That, yeah, like, wait, wait, it, it was like a misery where yeah. Sonic like breaks his leg and he's in bed and the guy's like, "Oh, let me go get my Sonic fan fictions." Oh yeah. God. Yeah, it was a total like joke. On oh, the and wait, what does he say? He's like, he says something about he's going through them and he's like reading off. He's like, "No, that one's this one, this one." A Sonic and Amy, ugh, everyone does those, or something like yeah. that. And it's just what like, is wrong with this world where we'd rather watch a Sonic CG show than actually play the games? Uh, bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. Mm. Also, so, to be fair, like, the cartoon is... They, I think they realized how bad it was, so they just went all out with making it witty in scenes. I can't imagine it would be anywhere near entertaining in a full episode. Yeah. I would watch the a same show way the game of just is Sonic's just Twitter going up against Wendy's. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sonic Twitter is actually the greatest. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I just... I just make more Sonic Manias. Those were good. I actually never played Sonic Mania. It's so Play good. It. It's, it's really neat. And I am a Sonic fan, so I should eventually. And you should definitely look up all the references, like, once you play it and stuff, because, uh, like, one example, I don't want to give, like, all of them away to you if you haven't played the game, but they use, um, in one of the, the levels, they use an enemy that was planned for Sonic 1 and got scrapped. Really? Um, yeah, so they revamped him and made him, like, viable. And, uh, and then, like, in another, uh, in another level, there's a TV van, because you're in, like, a, a movie studio zone. And uh, the van is modeled after the Daytona car. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. the Hornet from Daytona USA. So they, there's I, basically the game was made by. A, I'm not even like being funny. This is actually the truth. They they were the game was made by a bunch of Sega nerds. So they just threw in like references wherever they could without it being tacky. Um, I appreciate that. And they used yeah they yeah. they they, they, bought, um, they borrowed a bunch of. Um, prototype assets and unused shit from Sega that they were going to use for Sonic games, and they put them in. So this is a, a fan project, like, or an was official it like? fan project? I, it was, yeah, it was like officially sponsored and licensed. By you ever Sega. play the? Um, you ever play some of the newer ports of Sonic, like the new Sonic CD and Sonic Two ports that were made by Christian Whitehead? No, I haven't. Okay, well he did the ports, and he did such good jobs on them. <clears throat> that Sega was like, yeah, dude, you want to make a game? Go for it. By the way, can we? I just say how much I love Sonic Boom's theme song. No. I love Wait. it. No. Wait, like the so like the bad Sonic Boom or the Sonic Boom song? Oh, sorry. The Sega I'm being dumb. Sonic CD. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, no, that, that's a that's a '90s banger. Oh, like, yeah. Okay. Sorry for being dumb right there. Now. Sonic CD. What, what, what did you say, Chris? I say we don't have to crucify him now. He's yeah. like in the song, don't they go like Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You like that. the one that was written by um, <clears throat> fuck. In the current game space, like 
Sega openly embracing their fans to this extent, Nintendo would just take these fuckers down. They wouldn't even commend yeah. them for a good port. Yeah, oh, yeah. Totally it's like, yeah. we they, there were good Nintendo ports, and they were taken down. No, I, I think uh, Sega's definitely tied for, like, my top game producers at all time. Spencer Nielsen, that's the guy's name. God damn it. They have done some dumb stuff back in the day, but, like, I mean, currently, I mean, right nowadays, yeah, like the, but, like... The shining force. No yeah. company's perfect, unfortunately. I agree, like, they've again, been doing good. It's a lesser of a couple of evils right now. Yeah. Yep, 100%. Sega's been keeping their nose clean. Yeah, I mean they they've been putting out good Yakuza games, so yeah. yeah. And uh, I forgot they did Yakuza. Wow. They stream it on Twitch. Did you guys hear about the new one they did? The new <laughs> new one, not it, it's not a Yakuza Zero? game. Oh no, I haven't heard of it. It it plays like Yakuza, but it's Fist of the North Star. Oh yeah yeah yeah, I've heard about that one. I hear it's fucking incredible. Yeah. Pete got it because he is actually the world's number one Fist of the North Star fan. My cousin but, Pete really wants to get it too. <laughs> it must be a Pete dude, thing. Tell tell him it's really yeah, good. Yeah, it must be a Pete thing. Yeah, it's a Pete thing. Pete proudly displays the Sega Genesis copy of Last Battle because it's the, the Genesis Fist of the North Star game that got localized into not Fist of the North Star for America. Mm. It's on his Fist of the North Star shelf because technically <laughs> it counts. Okay. <laughs> I dig it. Considering Fist of the North Star was in no way loose, in no way dissimilar to Mad Max, just look at the Road Warrior costumes that Ken wears. Is this basically the closest we're going to get to a Dynasty Warriors Mad Max? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it is. I am strangely um, okay with that. <laughs> no, dude, and you know, you played Yaku as a game, right, Chris? Yeah, got a couple of them. Yeah, so it, there's all, like, the different side missions, and, like, there's a rhythm mini game just like in Yakuza, where Ken dances. Perfect. It's great. Yeah. Karaoke, hostess clubs, you name it. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, and, um, <laughs> it, it was so funny. The other day, I don't think I told you about this, Taylor. I got a, a message literally out of nowhere from Pete. Not that that's weird, but, like, um, he messaged How me out he? of nowhere with just a picture of Ken breaking some dude's arm with the bone coming out of the skin and blood everywhere uh -huh. and he just said reminder this is from a children's manga <laughs> <laughs> um so we are starting to run near the end of our time frame for the yes, show we are um it's taylor is there something you want to go over yeah um uh, what uh there's this site that i follow i mean i follow them on facebook i don't really check their um their actual website too often it's called the dreamcast junkyard and they're the ones that post about this so it's where i heard about it um i don't recall because i don't have the article in front of me i don't recall who it was that did this and like you know made the um the adapter for it but there's a there's a physical adapter you can buy to plug into your dreamcast that lets you use playstation 4 controllers um so I guess if for some reason you really don't like the Dreamcast controllers, you have that. But um, more importantly, it means you can use fight sticks. Which... And there's a very good port of Third Strike on the Dreamcast. Yes, so that's pretty exciting. Um, what was the other thing? I, I wrote it down. Shit. Um... I just looked up your article. It was done by Brook Accessory, the port. Or... There you go. Converter. Um. Oh, they also, it was just posted today, the same website. They did an interview with, um, what's his name? Uh, Bernie Stolar. He was the head of, um, Sega USA from 96 to 99, and he was, like, the forefront of the Dreamcast production. He was, uh, he was the one that basically, like, you know, they brought the idea up to him, and he, he hired the right people to make it happen, so... It's an interesting read, because, like, I mean, it's really cool to, like, be involved with something like that, but ultimately it wasn't that successful. So... It's a good read. It's worth it. Cool. Uh, actually, I don't think I have a Dreamcast. Huh? I don't. I don't think I've ever had a Dreamcast. My cousin has gone had one. I, I have one. It's. I love it. What's the library like for it? Um. 
too small. Yeah, too <laughs> small. I heard, like I know Dreamcast. Does Dreamcast? No, Sa Sega Saturn had like the crazy expensive games, right? Yeah. Well, now they're expensive. Yeah, like five hundred or something like that. I'm Hold sure on, let, let me see something. Google Chrome. Click the clack. Ebay, eBay. Let's see. Dragon Force Saturn. Search Let's quicker. See. I'm too delirious to be left alone with an open mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Stop getting sick, Chris. God. What are you looking for? Soul it's not me. That's the problem. It's the outside world. I know the struggles. Yeah, Dragon Force alone for the disc is like seventy-two dollars. An inbox is almost like two hundred. How about unopened? Um, Oh, forget. Uh, I don't know if anybody even would have that. <laughs> um, the Panzer Dragoon saw. Oh, yeah, Panzer Dragoon is one of the most expensive Saturn games. I know somebody fucking has it, yeah. too. Really? I'm sorry, why does that say 11 Uh, because it's the Japanese version. Uh, <laughs> You're like, buy it! We need to specify that. Uh, the American version is about $600. Wow. Yeah, there's one, one listing. Is this sold listing? Yes. Okay, wait, scroll back up to it. It is near mint condition, tested and working. Five hundred ninety-six dollars. Beautiful. Um, and then wait, oh, the near N E A R. I thought you were talking about near like automata. I, uh, no, no. Where is my brain? God. I think I think there, there's three more I want to look up. That's two hundred. Burning Rangers for the disc is two hundred. Uh, two fifty I think for with the case. Um. There were two more I was going to look up. Shining Force? Shining Force is silly. No, that's a lot of... Uh, um, well, okay, Shining me... Force is like between 160 and 250. Okay, there's this eBay listing. It has... It's a lot. It has Panzer Dragoon Saga, Shining Force 3, Dragon Force, and more, as it says. And more! <laughs> it's sold... For three thousand four hundred dollars. Holy crap! Yeah. I'm, lo I'm looking at the original listing right now. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, can you not? Oh, there oh we okay, go. good. Okay. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, that's why, dude. It's like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. It's like fifty games. Holy shit! Wait, what else is in there that's rare? There's Dragon Force. Fifty games, three K. That's like sixty a pop. So that's not even terrible yeah. pricing. Yeah. Well, especially yeah. Especially because it has. Bands for Dragoon and Dragoon Saga and Zvei, which are like that's a couple hundred dollars right there. Yeah, Zvei is like sixty bucks or something, which it's not bad. Oh, um, um what was I the mean, it's terrifying it's like, when you put them all, all together yeah. for that one price, but no, yeah. no, no, absolutely. But you know, at the same time, it's just like holy, like seeing that in front of me. Does someone actually paid that much money? Shining wow. Force. And what was the last one I was gonna look up? Um, oh. Guardian Heroes, which is an amazing game, and I'm glad they re-released it, because it is $140. Yay! Wow. They released it on the 360. Yeah. Yeah, they've done this before, and it works. Like, when Bayonetta 2 was getting all built up, they did a single, like, installment re-release. Whereas yeah. the launch version came with Bayonetta 1 and 2, and when Bayonetta was announced in Smash, the prices were jacked up to, like, 90 100 bucks. Ew. And then they just did the single release for Bayonetta 2. Yeah. So, like, so um, they can do it again. So, like, I yeah, think the Guardian list... Heroes is worth your guys' time if you still have a 360 set up and feel like buying it on the store. Uh, it's a beat em up RPG. I found my old um, Pokédex from back in the day. It was like a physical Pokédex. Oh, uh, the little talking guy? Yeah, it was Wait, like is a, it the, the, the original. Red, like the old red one? Yep, the original red one. I have that too. I was I digging through my, like. It. Yeah, like, I looked it up, it was like $100, I'm like, cool, I'm gonna keep it. Wait, really? <laughs> was oh that his God. name Dexter? Was it? I don't think so. Yeah, that's what Ash called it, Dexter. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Ash Which confused me at the time because I was also watching Dexter's Laboratory. <laughs> I know this Yeah, apparently named, named Dexter. There was also a Red Lantern named Dexter, although it was, instead of Dexter, it was Dexter. But that was even the most confusing thing because it's actually a homicidal cat. Oh. Oh! Oh! Lovely. Oh wait, yeah, that's the um, whose cat is that? Fuck, he was in Injustice. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yes, Dexter. Oh, that's the one that the Red Lantern cat. That's exactly what Chris just said, Eric. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't hear but the Red yes. Lantern part. Yeah, 
Yeah, because oh god, someone someone I know who's into comics told me his origin story. It's something like oh, uh, I, I know it, I know it. Um, yeah, he yeah, was a rescue right. that was pulled out of a gutter, and his and owner was gunned down in a robbery. Or oh, I heard and his owner was beat up. Little and kid was so full of rage that it ended up getting the laser precision of something on like a galactic mission, looking for pure anger. Yeah, because its best friend was gunned down. And then so, he proceeded to kill the, the kids. Kittens aren't big enough to even have that much anger, but damn. Hmm. That just shows how, how just, pure a friend's love can be. Listen, I... Just reading I, over and over again the cat's monologue in broken English, I good kitty, I hurt bad people. And then he just starts getting these glowing red laser claws and oh. cutting people to ribbons. You it's have not torture. met my cat. <laughs> I mean, you wanted to fight it before we started casting. Listen, so. he used me a kind of a jerk. So. I got three ferals outside. We can have a, I don't know, cockfighting ring. Listen, we, we had, I had to go mano y mano with my cat. He won. <laughs> he won. <laughs> it's very one-sided. <laughs> and to be true, and to be uh, fair, my three guys out there also bring back prey all the time, so they are getting practice. Mm. Oh, yeah. When they bring back pay, prey, they look stare at you in the eyes. Telling you here next. Half the time they'll just plop it on the uh, doorstep and wait for us to let them in. The other half of the time, if we don't let them in soon enough, they'll start eating it. Oh, oh. lovely. Ugh. That's very metal. Ugh. I let good meat go to waste. Yep. Yeah, that's true. More meat for the meat god. That's how the saying goes, right? Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. Yes. And on, on that 40k related note. Good uh, night, everybody. Good night. It's been fun. We'll see you all next week. So long, heretics. Have a good one. Yep. Bye. Later.